Hi, this is Carrie, Christ Center Counselor and Life Coach with Promise Coaching. And today I'm going to talk about a difficult and controversial topic, even among believers. And I'm sure a lot of you are going to be surprised that I'm going over this topic, but I think it's really important to address, especially in relationship to narcissism. So we're going to talk about narcissism in conjunction with the topic that we're addressing today. And that topic is premarital sex. I think that this is one of the areas that the enemy targets the most among believing women, especially because the enemy ultimately wants us to compromise our values, our morals, and our beliefs all the time. And he wants us to compromise those so that way he can offer us a different way. He can offer us some other alternative to God's way. And a lot of times narcissistic men will try to manipulate you and convince you that there are all these reasons why you should compromise your faith and your values in order to give them what they selfishly want. So I wanna bring some clarity to this topic and I wanna bring some scriptural truths in the proper context for you to gain some better and clearer understanding. So first of all, let's talk about what a true believer is. What is a true believer in Christ? A true believer is not just one who believes that Jesus died on the cross and rose again, and that he is in fact our savior. That's something the Bible says even the demons believe in. So we can't just say a believer is someone who believes in these essential things and these truths that had taken place. You can believe that things happened in history and not believe in the value of it or its teaching. So that's important to remember. A true believer is someone who not only believes that these events took place, but they also believe in the value of it, in the teaching of it, understand the teaching of it, and strive to walk and live by it. That is a true believer. Someone who is not just claiming I believe in God because I believe that Jesus did in fact come and die for our sins and rose again, but that they believe in Jesus' teachings and the purpose of sending him and bringing conviction to our hearts so that we can repent and turn to him and obtain salvation by his grace. So, that is the difference between someone who is claiming to be a believer and someone who isn't. Someone who's claiming to be a believer and isn't is not going to live by the word of God. They're going to always have excuses and arguments to make against the word of God and try and justify their sin, whatever that might look like. And I'll give you an example from one of my own personal experiences. I had an ex that I was with very early on in my walk with Christ. And he was very well versed and knowledgeable in the word and was always taking it out of context and trying to find loopholes in the Bible, which there are none. There are no loopholes in the Bible. He was trying to find ways to skirt around the truth, to convince me and manipulate me that it was okay for us to be having sex before marriage and then also using that to convince me of why we should marry. So he was actually using sex and then using misusing the word of God to manipulate me into marrying him because of the sinful act that we were committing. So something that Pastor John MacArthur talks about a lot, and I truly admire him for speaking on this, is that if two people are already living in sin before they get married, well, they are walking into that marriage in sin. So the marriage is not starting out as a holy 
covenant. It's not starting out as a Christ-centered covenant because there's already sin residing in the relationship before they even enter that covenant. So that's something to be really cautious of because if someone is saying, oh, now that we've had sex, we should get married, that's not always the answer for one. And the other thing is that you can't continue using God's grace because this is not the purpose of grace. You cannot use God's grace as a scapegoat for you to continue sinning. And that's with any sin, aside from premarital sex. That's with any sin. This is with any sin that you are deliberately and willingly and knowingly doing on a regular basis. Because we all sin every day. We know that, right? But when we know that we're doing wrong, the word even tells us that even if it's not technically considered sin scripturally, if we feel and believe and know in our hearts that we're doing something wrong, even if it's not considered sin, well, then that makes it sinful because we know that what we're doing or we feel convicted that what we're doing is not right. And so when we know the word of God and we claim to be a believer and we're still messing up and we're still committing these sins on a regular, continuous, deliberate basis, well, then we're fooling ourselves. Then we're not really living and walking as believers in Christ. So I know that this is going to be really hard to hear for a lot of people listening. Um, probably a lot of people that know me personally are not going to like this message. But this is the truth. This is the word of God. This is the truth. And this is what we must address. And what breaks my heart more than anything is I'm seeing so many women today, single women in the dating world, myself included, just dealing with like a pack of wolves. I mean, there are just so many men out there that their expectations don't need to alter because there's so many women out there that are just willing to give themselves up, you know, on the second, third, fourth date, whenever. Whenever they have these ideas and these ideals in mind about timelines and, and when it's okay to do these these sinful acts with the person that they're dating. You know, there's no dating with intention. There's no commitment. This is just very casual dating, casual sex in hopes of what? And then you go home crying because you're not finding the right guy. Well, this is why, because you're not living according to God's standards first and foremost. And the standards that you've had on your own keep getting lower and lower and lower because you're dealing with a pack of wolves out there who are wolves in sheep's clothing. They claim to be believers, but they're not. And so you're thinking, I need to compromise so that way I can keep this man. And the truth is, that's not going to keep him because the right man, a true man of God, is not going to want a woman who's going to be giving it up like that. And those who are not walking with God are more than likely going to be sleeping with other women as well, or it's only going to be a matter of time before they push you aside because you're not meeting their expectations. And there's so many other women out there that are willing to give it up as well. So you're no longer special. You're no longer valued. And this leaves so many women today feeling empty and worthless. This is what Christ came to free us of, this type of bondage of sin. And so I'm going to talk about just how important this is, especially this sin in particular. So I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians 6, 9. We're going to start there. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery, or male prostitutes, or practice homosexuality, or are thieves, or are greedy, or drunkards, or abusive, or cheat people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed. You were sanctified. When you go to God and you repent of your sin, and you commit, you truly are repentant, because True repentance produces 
change. It produces permanent change. So if you go to God and you're repentant of your sin and you choose and commit to live differently, you are now sanctified. You are cleansed. You were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. So, no matter how many times you've messed this up, no matter how many times you've had sex before marriage, you can be cleansed and sanctified by God. And now I'm going to go down to 1 Corinthians 6.15. Don't you realize that your bodies are actually parts of Christ? Should a man take his body, which is part of Christ, and join it to a prostitute? Never. And don't you realize that if a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one body with her. For the scriptures say the two are united into one. But the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him, the Lord. Run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. You are sinning against your own body. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a price, a high price is what it says. So you must honor God with your body. Okay, and this is why it says, now regarding the questions you asked, yes, it is good to abstain from sexual relations, but because there is so much sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman should have her own husband. The husband should fulfill his wife's sexual needs and the wife should fulfill her husband's needs. The wife gives authority over her body to her husband and the husband gives authority over his body to his wife. Do not deprive each other of sexual relations unless you both agree to refrain from sexual intimacy for a limited time so you can give yourselves more completely to prayer. Okay. Afterward, you should come together again so that Satan won't be able to tempt you because of your lack of self-control. I say this as a concession, not as a command, but I wish everyone were single just as I am, yet each person has a special gift from God of one kind or another. So were you created to be single or were you created to be married? If you are desiring to have sexual relations, if you're desiring to be physically intimate with someone, then you are more likely than not made to be married. So as women of God, as believers, as believers in Christ and of Christ, we should be dating with the intention of marriage and we should not be having sex with men before that takes place, before we are in a marital covenant with them. So I say to those who aren't married, this is the unmarried and to the widows, it's better to stay unmarried just as I am. But if they can't control themselves, they should go ahead and marry. It's better to marry than to burn with lust. So who is he talking about with unmarried? I just learned this. He's talking about those who maybe have had sex before marriage or are divorced, not virgins. So then he goes in later to talk about virgins. So he's referring mainly to people who have been in a situation with an unbeliever, maybe that's walked away. Um, that's the unmarried, those who've been divorced. And then he refers to as the, with the widows. So I say to those who are, aren't married and to the widows to break that down for you. Because a lot of people think, oh, this is just referring to widows. No, it's not. It's actually referring to those who are unmarried, whether that means they were divorced or they had sex before, you know, being married. Um, they haven't been married, but they've already, they're no longer virgins. Um, they've been left or abandoned by an unbeliever. Those are the unmarried. So it says it's better, to, it's better to marry than to burn with lust. Okay. So if you, again, are desiring to be physically intimate with someone, 
you should be married. And men who are true believers in Christ understand this, they know this, and this is why they also date with intention. And they are very hard to find these days. So all of these things are really important to think about because a man who is treating you as a bride in Christ is going to be honoring you. He's going to be honoring you, your body in that way, and your heart in that way, and knowing that you were bought at a high price and that you are a temple of the Holy Spirit that belongs to God. You are not your own. You belong to God. So until he commits himself to you in Christ, he has no right to your body. He has no right to it. So if a man is making you feel guilty for this, if he's, in many cases, I've heard men being pouty over this, um, trying to convince you, oh, well, maybe, you know, we can do this in six months or maybe after we're engaged, you know, um, I just, I just need to know. I hear about all of these compatibility issues. That is the most ridiculous thing. Compatibility issues are the most ridiculous excuse for wanting to have sex before marriage. Um, I think the, the statistics of people not being compatible in some way, um, I mean, in what way are you referring to? Okay, because there's very, very rare cases where it's not going to work you know, so that should be such a minor, minor issue in comparison to glorifying our Heavenly Father and walking in the Word of God and living by and being obedient. I mean, what that's more important than being obedient to our Lord and Savior? I don't think so. And I think in most cases, you know, you know whether or not the two of you are going to be compatible because you already can sense the chemistry. You feel that when you're next to each other. You feel that when you're holding hands. You feel that when you kiss that person, which you also need to be very careful of if you're waiting for marriage, which I hope that you commit to do. So now I want to go into Proverbs and, and I want to share something in Proverbs with you guys that really spoke to me and I want to address with you guys because what happens when we enter into a, a sexual relationship with someone prior to marriage is that we end up losing that discernment or we end up getting too physically intimate with someone before we marry them, even if we haven't had sex, our discernment gets thrown off completely. So I want to talk about just how important this is to always continuously go back to the word of God to understand the wisdom in the word and why it's so important for us. And this is Proverbs chapter 8. Listen as wisdom calls out. Hear as understanding raises her voice on the hilltop along the road. She takes her stand at the crossroads, by the gates, at the entrance to the town. On the road leading in, she cries aloud, I call to you, to all of you. I raise my voice to all people. You simple people, use good judgment. You foolish people, show some understanding. Listen to me, for I have important things to tell you. Everything I say is right, for I speak the truth and detest every kind of deception. This is wisdom. My advice is wholesome. There is nothing devious or crooked in it. My words are plain to anyone with understanding. Clear to those with knowledge, choose my instruction rather than silver and knowledge rather than pure gold, for wisdom is far more valuable than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with it. Nothing you desire can compare with the wisdom of God. I, wisdom, live together with good judgment. 
I know where to discover knowledge and discernment. This is the wisdom of God, and this is what we must abide in so that we don't lose our good judgment or discernment. And trust, I know how difficult this is, especially in the world that we are living in today with so many wolves among us, with so many wolves in sheep's clothing, claiming to be believers, saying that they're believers, but they're not convicted as believers. And so when you wait and you can see this in time, then you're able in the waiting, using this wisdom, using the truth and the knowledge of God that's been given to us to use the proper judgment and discern if these people truly are walking in God and honoring you as a daughter in Christ or not. I hope this was helpful. And if you have anything that you'd like to share in the comments about your personal journey on this, or even admitting to where you've messed up in your journey and wanting to recommit yourself to God and become cleansed and sanctified in Him and His truths and His ways, I would love to hear from you. Please share in the comments. And if you like this video, please hit like, subscribe to this channel, and take care.